Uh, why are we qualified to talk about this kind of stuff? Uh, well, simple, it's you know, what we do for a living. Uh, it's what we make in our software, uh, which is competitive analysis stuff. Uh, so we track you know, 95 million keywords, 40 million domains, all those nice stats up there. Uh, but all of that gives us some good insight uh, into how to eliminate trial and error. Um, and kind of the reason we came up with this presentation uh, was because we present at a couple conferences uh, over the course of a year. Uh, and a question that always comes up uh, during PPC stuff uh, is where do you actually begin? Uh, because lots of people do presentations about, you know, A-B testing and, you know, taking uh, your ads and figuring out how to make them perform better. Uh, but before you get to that point, you have to actually create something. Uh, so that is what our strategy is about. The screen went blank. It's the wrong button. There we go. So, trial and error. Uh, a lot of people, when they're, even when they're first starting out, uh, maybe they don't know exactly how to uh, compile their initial list. Uh, so they might resort to taking a look in Google, seeing who else is advertising. Um, but the problem is they don't really know how those people are performing. So they see lots of great ads, but they don't know which ones are successful. Uh, and if you do that, uh, start copying some ads that are up there, looking at some keywords that look like they're good, then we're falling into the trial and error category. Sort of like uh, when you were a kid, standing on the side of a pool, uh, you didn't want to go in because it might be too cold, you're not quite sure, so your parents maybe said, just jump in and find out. So should you just jump in and start picking out keywords and advertising and writing ads? Well, sort of. Uh, but we have to get rid of trial and error. And it's actually very easy to do. Uh, and in my presentation today, I'm going to talk about some tools that actually will help you do that. Uh, so where do we start? Well, we have to start by thinking differently, outside of the box maybe, a little bit. Um, but basically what we're going to do is get some confidence. So. There's a couple things that we want to do to eliminate the trial and error. Um, the biggest point is the point number one up there, which is identify our competition. And a lot of people don't really do that. A lot of people maybe have some idea who their competition is. Maybe they just, uh, if you're going to run a campaign, probably you're either in the uh, industry or your clients in the industry. Uh, but you might not have a full picture of who else is advertising. Uh, but then once we understand that, we're going to check what they're doing, and then we can do things, uh, some interesting things, and which will help us avoid their mistakes and learn from their success. But the biggest point, identify the competition. Uh, and there's some tools that we can use. Now, the first one is the one that everybody uses automatically, use your brain. Obviously, you're going to have some insight before you start typing things into Google Keyword Tool. Um, but then there's some other tools that we can use because your brain isn't going to really find everything, but software will. So the first thing, and actually my favorite new thing that I'm going to talk about is similar sites. Uh, has anyone used similar sites? There's actually a Polish version of it. Yeah, yeah, I like it a lot. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit. And then there's some other tools which I'm not really going to go in depth with, like Keywords by Word Tracker, our own tool, SEMrush, and so on. But similar sites is really cool. Now, for my examples, uh, I'm going from as if I was an online retailer selling skateboard stuff, which I know is a little bit popular here in Poland because actually I went to the supermarket yesterday and saw a bunch of skateboarders. So somebody must have some idea of skateboarding. So what I am is the first thing uh, up at the top, skatehut.co.uk, which is what I typed into this tool. Now, what Similar Sites does is they say that they are not a tool for advertisers. They say that they are for end users, and they say they're a recommendation engine. So what they say they do is if you go to skatehut.co.uk, based on what other people have done, the next site you might like is skates.co.uk. 
So what they're actually doing is compiling data from a whole bunch of different sources, including uh, toolbar integrations, they have partnerships with people, uh, different review sites and all that. Uh, and they're putting all that data together to show you what people have browsed that have also browsed the site in question. Which actually, if you're thinking about being a retail site, that's actually really powerful because these are the other sites that are selling the same stuff that you are. Uh, and if people are browsing several different retail sites, obviously they're price shopping and they're about to buy something. So this is showing you who your direct competitors are, group by similarity score. Now, similarity score is made up of a couple different things. Uh, so this is the most interesting one, and this is what is so cool about this site. This is shared visitors, and they actually show you exactly this uh, chart ranked by number of shared visitors. So if we are skatehut.co.uk, we can see skates.co.uk is the first one there. So if I'm Skate Hut, I know that if they didn't buy from me, most likely they bought from skates.co.uk. So what is that website doing? So that's actually an awesome starting point. So that's similar sites in the Polish version, actually, I checked it this morning. Um, with my very limited Polish, I typed in Aptieka. <laughs> and it, it works really well, it's pl.similarsites.com. Anyway, now that we know kind of who the competitors are, uh, we need to understand what kind of competitors we're looking at. So you've probably heard this before, transactional versus informational. Um, organic is a tough thing to crack, especially in retail. Uh, and one of the things you have to look out for, an obstacle, is uh, informational keywords. So kind of, if somebody is looking for a video of a skateboarder, you don't want them to wind up seeing your ad. So you can use negative keywords and all that stuff, but you have to know which negative keywords to use. Uh, and one of the ways you can do that, other than guessing, is looking at what your competition is buying. Um, so probably, if the competition is buying pro skateboards, uh, that keyword is going to convert, especially if more than one buys it. Uh, but if you see maybe, oh, nobody's bidding on pro skateboarders, we should probably get it. It's probably not a good idea, actually, because pro skateboarders uh, probably is about people doing skateboarding. So they might not be looking to buy, they might be looking to watch a video. Another thing, you don't compete with Amazon. Uh, a lot of people, actually, uh, a lot of our customers, uh, they want, they call us and they say, how much does it cost to get all of Amazon's paid keywords? Uh, but why do you want that? Because actually, you don't compete with Amazon at all. Amazon has tons of money, and they can afford to blow it. Uh, so they don't just bid to make you buy stuff. They bid on keywords that eBay bids on to knock eBay out of the listings. So you don't want to help them do that, and you don't know which keywords that they're doing that with, um, because you don't have this kind of budget. And if you do have this kind of budget, I'm not quite sure why you're listening to me, because you're probably a lot better than we are. So disregard sites like Amazon and other big sites that have unlimited budget. So your competitors are people who have roughly the same budget and product set that you have. So now that we know who to look at, uh, we need to know what to look at. And we need to identify the entire landscape of paid advertising and see how we'll fit in effectively. And there's a couple of things that we can do. Um, if several competitors are bidding on the same keyword uh, at the same time, most likely the keyword converts. Uh, and that's actually a very simple concept, of course. If one person is bidding on a keyword, they could just be experimenting or they could be making a mistake. If two people bid on a keyword, maybe it's a coincidence. But if three people bid on a keyword, that's not a coincidence. There's something to that keyword. Uh, on the flip side, if nobody bids on a keyword and you think it's great, there's probably something wrong. I'm not quite sure if that translates into Polish, but it's kind of a joke. The car says kidnap, which is not something you want to do to kids. So what are we going to do to build our keyword list? We're going to start from a proven foundation. 
And what that means is, if we want to start with the greatest chance of success, we're going to start with things that obviously work, which is really easy to find now that we've done uh, the few previous steps. So uh, this is a tool in SEM Rush uh, that I'm just using for a demonstration because it's the one I know how to use. Uh, so if you look here, uh, what this is actually doing is looking at the three sites I've typed in there. The first one is my site. Uh, the second one, no, I'm sorry, the first one is Skate Hut, yeah. The second one skates and the third one Surf Dome. And they all sell the same stuff. And they're all retail sites and they all have roughly the same budget. And what this tool has done is it's combined all of their paid keywords and taken out the ones that they don't share. So this is showing everything that they bid on uh, in common at the same time uh, with all three of them. Uh, so that's really powerful because these, basically this is a list of keywords that work for them. Uh, this is a list of keywords that they're making money on right now. Uh, and it was very easy to do once we knew who to look at. Uh, now if you look at this, there's a couple things in here. Maybe we don't sell roller skates. Uh, we don't sell scooters because scooters are dumb. Uh, but these guys do. So of course we want to look at relevant keywords. Some people skip this step and just download everything and paste it into uh, Google. But that's not a good idea. So obviously common sense, now we found 233 shared relevant keywords that we know will work. Uh, so if we want to be even more sure, uh, we look at historical trending. Now what this is showing is over the past couple months who's bid on what keyword and what they've bid and uh, what, uh, what their actual ad text was. Uh, but the important thing is we don't care what the ad text was. We're looking at uh, the bids over time. So we can see that uh, for those three keywords I've highlighted, uh, they've consistently bid on those keywords. So looking at trends over time is another step that you should do. Um, one of the other things it shows you is when something sells. So maybe if you're selling something like a winter coat, you can see obviously that it's not going to sell during the summer. Uh, but looking at historical trending, you see exactly when it starts to sell, what month it starts to sell, and who else sells it, and how it works. So we've actually got that list of 233 keywords. Uh, we can top it into Google Trends. And of course, I'm sure everybody knows what Google Trends is. Uh, but we can make it uh, very specific. Uh, what I've done here is I've limited it to product search. Uh, and now I'm just doing it in the, the UK for this example. Over the past 12 months, so now I'm looking at uh, related transactional keywords that are related to the list that I got uh, from my competition that I already know works. Now the biggest thing here, uh, which I didn't actually mention yet, is exact match. Um, Everyone, of course, is familiar with match types. Uh, but exact match, especially in our initial list, is really important. Uh, because basically, we want to be able to judge one keyword against another keyword on its own merits without any overlapping volume. Uh, especially as we're building our initial list, uh, we need to see you know, exactly what we're getting. Um, we need to know, you know, singular and plural keywords and build out from there, but, you know, we're, we're buying the keywords. So obviously we need to know which ones are going to work or not. Um, so an example here, you know, buy pro skateboards might convert more than buy a pro skateboard, so we want to bid on the one that actually converts. Uh, and this is kind of the reason that I give people. Uh, it's Google Keyword Tool is a salesman. Basically, uh, if you think about it, Google Keyword Tool, their goal is not to help you uh, make the most money uh, as possible. Uh, it's not to sell you the best, highest converting keywords. They just want to sell you keywords in general that people will click on. Uh, so by default, they show you broad match results. Uh, and they say each keyword looks so great. Um, and you kind of have to, to haggle with them a little bit. Uh, so here is kind of an example in this little funny comic. Um, talking about the keyword skateboard, and he talks them down from 7.48 million searches per day. Of course, that's global volume. 
And as he haggles them down, finally Google can tell you, okay, only in the UK exactly at 6,600. So of course, how do you haggle with Google? You just make sure you check exact match. Um, like comparing keywords to one another. Uh, you know, there's overlapping volume even in something like apples versus oranges. Uh, both of them, of course, are fruit. So if you're selling one versus the other and you bid on fruit, you're going to be advertising for both. So to accurately compare one to another, uh, you need to make sure you're bidding on exactly what you're going to get. So, when you have an initial list, uh, then you have some things that you can do. And one of them might be localizing. Now, in this strategy, it's kind of been predicated on uh, looking at your competition in a broad sense and seeing what they're bidding on. Now, the problem might be that you are a local store or you're in a local market, and maybe you don't have three competitors that you can take a look at. Uh, maybe you are the only skateboard shop in your town. Now the thing to remember is that somebody looking for skateboards in your town, uh, if they speak the same language as somebody in the next town over, they're probably looking for skateboards in the same way. So once we have a list of keywords that we know work, uh, we can use a tool like Merge Words to localize. Now, Merge Words is simple and it's free and it just does one thing. Uh, and you put a list uh, into each of these either two or three boxes and it just makes every possible combination. So here I've used some uh, English towns. Uh, but the important point is I'm using the list that I know works and just adding in the names of the towns for local results that I am pretty sure will convert. Another good tool as keyword I. Um, uh, actually, this might be a little bit English specific, uh, but it's a great tool because it lets you really quickly find stuff. Uh, you can really quickly find keywords that you should bid on. Uh, basically, you put in your keyword and it shows you immediately uh, big green stuff, and the big green stuff is the easy stuff to get. And then it also lets you put everything into a list. You just click on it and it goes to a list and you can export the whole thing. Uh, and of course it gives you uh, stats on each keyword uh, all in the list. It makes a nice little CSV file to download. Now this is my new favorite tool, uh, really favorite tool. Uh, this is unfortunately a little bit English specific. Uh, but has anybody ever heard of uh, Keyword Tool Dominator? Maybe not. But basically what this is, is it shows you uh, keyword recommendations uh, from eBay, Amazon, and Google product search. Uh, so if you think about it, this is showing you only transactional keywords. So if you type in a keyword uh, into Amazon, and it shows you some suggestions, Amazon is showing those suggestions because Amazon thinks those suggestions will sell you something. So why not use that? on your own stuff. And actually, I've used uh, here skateboard. Uh, now, a long time ago, when I was a kid, I was really into skateboarding. So I know that all of this stuff is actually really good skateboard stuff. This is all parts of skateboards. Um, and if you're looking to buy parts of skateboards, if you run a skateboard shop, you sell all this stuff. And now you know how Amazon thinks it's worded to sell. So now you can just Take it. Of course, you want to check everything in Google Keyword Tool, uh, just because you should never just trust one specific tool. And of course, we're always doing exact match. Uh, so, to recap, uh, you should know your competitors. Obviously, you should know your real competition. Uh, and then you should. Uh, take their experience. Uh, if you have the full view of the market in PPC, uh, then you have the full view of everything your competitor is doing. Uh, because really, uh, if you think about it, they can't help but make what they're doing public. And it's not just for paid advertising as well. Uh, if you think about it, 
When you steal your competitor's experience uh, in advertising, you can apply it to almost everything that you're looking to do uh, in business. Like for example, if you're looking to bring in a new product, uh, if you see that you know, three people are all bidding on that product for the past six months, then you know that that product must sell. Uh, three people wouldn't all be wasting money at the same time. Uh, conversely, if they're not spending any money on it or if it's gone down over the past year, then it's not a good product to bring in. Uh, and there's a lot of tools out there that you can use uh, to build smart keyword lists or product lists or anything. Um, you just have to know where they are and uh, the tools I've used in the presentation are some great ones. And also to always remember transactional versus informational keywords. Always use exact match, which is a given. Um, and kind of the overall point is whatever you're planning to do for the future, uh, someone has already done something similar or comparable. Um, and you can't always trust Google because Google wants to sell you something and they don't care if you're going to make money or not. Uh, that part is up to you. Uh, so the tools that I've used in this presentation, uh, uh, this slideshow should be translated also into Polish uh, today, uh, but SimilarSites.com, uh, the Polish version is pl.similarsites.com. I definitely recommend playing with that. Uh, SEMrush.com uh, is one of our sites. Unfortunately, we're not in the Polish market quite yet. Uh, but probably within six months. Uh, but I think we're very good for English and uh, some other European languages. Um, MergeWords.com, of course, is universal. It's a very quick and easy and handy tool. Uh, Keyword Tool Dominator is really my favorite tool. Uh, it can definitely help uh, if you're doing things. It's primarily English-based, um, but of course, if you keep that in mind, that it's uh, you know, a product that sells in one way in English, you know, you can translate and then check. And so it's still worth checking out. Keywordi.co.uk is a great tool. Uh, and of course, Google Keyword Tool. So thank you very much for coming. Uh, that code is good for a free full month of SEM Rush. Uh, no credit card or anything required. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask me. Uh, Mamy czas you. na jedno pytanie. Thank you, Sean, very much. Uh, one short question. Hi. Uh, I Hi. have a question about SEMrush. Okay. Can you see your competitors' data from day one, or you need to wait to gather the data? We have two tools, actually. Uh, you can see it from day one. Uh, we do monthly trending. Um, so you can... Uh, simply type something in and get a result and it's based on monthly data. We also offer uh, a new live feature uh, which has not quite as much data um, but it's still uh, every day or two updated. And then we also have a tracking tool which you put in your information and then we scrape it for you. So that one you have to wait a little bit. So it's kind of both uh, and there's always something available. <laughs> Please. Any questions? Okay. Thank you, Sean, very much. Thank you very much. Uh,